They said it could turn be a muscle training for awareness. That we had to learn to build this awareness muscle. That um, it's not it's not something we're taught in school. At least not at this this moment in time. Um, no, I'd agree. I would agree because it seems like what we're taught is how to make each moment more efficient and how to multitask and mm-hmm. how to how to be able to really pile things onto our plate so we can accomplish a lot. It seems more about the result or the end than it does about this this um, focus that you're talking about or this, uh, it seems almost like you're developing a sense of objectivity where you can shift your perspective in any moment. Mm-hmm. That seems to me like it would be empowering, is it? Um, that's been my experience. It's almost like looking through a prison that you can turn in your hand and see different different ways of looking mm-hmm. at it. Um, mm-hmm. And by doing that, there, it creates more freedom. And it even creates a sense, oh, I'm making, I'm making up this uh, segment so I can turn it and make up a different segment. Um, I almost think of it as like I'm putting on different thought hats. Like one of the things that doesn't work for me um, that feels fake at times is this idea of affirmations. And for me, it feels fake because sometimes I put on an affirmation hat and it just doesn't feel, it just doesn't ring true in my body. Mm -hmm. So what I like to think about is taking off that thing that feels fake and putting on something that feels like a stretch but feels and resonates true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it may be a gradual affirmation or a gradual next step for a way of looking at a situation that you're in right now um, that gives you a new perspective. That's really beautiful because I do think it is a lot of affirmations that people are attempting to do are uh, quite far from where it is that they're at. So say if somebody's in a depression, for example, just to say, I am happy. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's a a far way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that sense of genuineness that you're talking about. And it seems like, like... where does genuine re- genuineness reside? It doesn't seem like it would be in the story that we tell ourselves. Yeah, hmm. I would agree. Hmm. Well, that's that's a big that's a big realization, huh? Yeah, it's. Uh, I love that saying. I mean, you should really write that one down. The genuineness doesn't come from the stories that we tell ourselves. Hmm. What role does habit have in all of this, too? Hmm. Yeah, that habitual patterned mind. And in yoga, we call it samskaras. Uh, that that the the mind, the patterns of the mind are like, oh, should I? Should I should really date myself. The, I'm going to say records. Okay, maybe we. <laughs> some of your <laughs> listeners don't even know about a thing called records that used to have these little grooves in them, and you could play them on a record player. <laughs> it's an ancient technology. Um, yeah, an ancient technology. Yes. Uh, but the you know the grooves of the mind, according to the yoga tradition, are like those grooves of the record player that um as we create thought waves and as we um strengthen thought waves by the actions that we take, like in other words, if we say, "Oh, I'm so fat, I'm so overweight i I love to eat, I love junk food, I eat so." And every time we eat candy, we say, oh, I love this piece of candy. We're creating a samskara, a stronger patterning of our mind. And that's why, you know, that is where affirmations work. But if you try and jump too far out of that groove, you'll just slip right back in because you don't believe it. Mm -hmm. So working with the samskaras or the the thought waves of the mind um, is a way first of recognizing the habits that we're in, the conditioned responses, and then... um, working with them with compassion in a way to keep trying on different thought hats, different ways of creating new, I mean, you're creating new thought waves every time you, uh, not every time you think is wrong because it it says that we're thinking a thought. Every time a thought arises, because if you look, if you actually look at the the way that the thoughts arise in your mind, Mm -hmm. it's not you saying, I'm going to think this. It's all of a sudden a thought arises. It's like, ooh, mm-hmm. that's interesting. And either you attach to that thought and create a story around it, or it just kind of dissolves away. Mm-hmm. So we can look at the habits that we're creating in the way that we're spending our time. Hi there, my name is Nina Wallander, and I wanted to talk to you about layers of health. 
Layers of Health is a free online community dedicated to investigating holistic and alternative health options. These options can include physical health, mental and emotional health, business health, as well as your spiritual health. So you can join me as I discuss your health concerns with various experts, mentors, and leaders in their fields. And these interviews are offered for free live, as well as during special Encore presentations. But if you find one that is particularly interesting to you, you can also purchase it. So you can join me at www.layersofhealth.com, and I'll see you on the calls.